Hi everyone. <laughs> I always have so much fun doing my little thing here in front of you guys to get it going. Okay. <sighs> okay. So, uh, I'm just looking at my glasses again. They always reflect. Okay. How's that? Yeah, but I can't read anything up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to start right away. We have our pot here with uh, just a little bit of water in the bottom. We're going to get that going on high uh, so that we can get it cooking faster. And um, so I forgot to get my other thing here going. Okay, so, um, oh God, the start of it is always so funny. Um, but anyway, okay, back to business here. Let's focus. We are, it's Monday morning, and uh, that's probably why I'm not focused. So we're going to cut up an onion, and we're going to put together a, um, it's a carrot recipe. Hey, darling, good morning. Hi. Um, so some of this, for some of you, might be a little bit of a repeat, um, but... Uh, we're going to talk about other things as well, and so, uh, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to have a fun Monday morning, and um, we're going to start with onions. So starting with the onions, we're going to do an onion, um, onion, we're going to do an onion, we're going to do an onion carrot dish uh, that's going to be um, cheesy but dairy-free, and then we're also going to do a... Um, Hi, Jane, good morning, how are you? Then we're gonna do like a buffalo wing potato dish. So those two things, and then we can talk about a few other things. Um, I just finished getting home from gleaning, which is the, um, the volunteer, you go and you pick fruit for the owners that can't pick it or um, don't want the fruit on the tree to stop it from falling on the trees. And so we just did a bunch of plums. So we'll be doing something with plums again later this week. And um, I can see there are still little twigs in my hair from being up in the tree. So for those of you that are new, uh, I usually cut my onion like this, score it this way, three quarters through, and then score it this way. And I just find that um, I'm in the habit of doing that. And so, um, it just helps it to, to slice into these cute little, um, you know, the little chunks, little bits of onion. So, um, yeah, I always seem to be scattered on a Monday morning. La, la, la. So, okay, so onions are very anti-inflammatory. They're very good for you. They um, are antihistamine, they have antihistamine properties. And I'm telling you, um, I just keep getting bit over and over again. And I'm not really sure what the, the last thing was that bit me, but, um, but I really swelled up, like really swelled up. I've got little scratches from being in the, uh, in the plum tree. But I had a bite and it really swelled up. And so I did have, um, came in the house and I had a little piece of onion and I rubbed that on it. And it really does work as an antihistamine. It's just super awesome for that. And so, um, the other thing, of course, that I always try to carry with me is lavender oil. And the lavender oil is, um, you know, it's so beneficial for so many things. Uh, if, you, if you aren't familiar, which I would be surprised if anybody wasn't, but if you're not familiar with lavender oil, it's uh, essential oil. And it's one of the few essential oils that you can use directly on the skin. Most of the essential oils are very, um, they're, they're too strong to be used on the skin, which is called NEAT, N-E-A-T. Hey, Kate, hi, good morning. Nice to see you here. So, yeah, so we're talking about antihistamines and bug bites. And, um, and so with the lavender oil, it works really, really good for... Um, uh, well, it works really, really good for bug bites. Like it just takes that itching right away and often it will remove the, uh, the swelling as well. And so the lavender oil is an essential oil and there aren't too many that you can use neat, which is straight up on the skin. 
Um, <clears throat> sometimes people have used things like um, tea tree oil, but again, it's very, very strong. And so most essential oils, they are the purest form of the oil of the plant, and they are quite often usually distilled, so they're like super concentrated. And um, so you need to use a carrier oil. It's what they call a carrier oil, and that would be something that you would put your pure essential oil into to put it on the skin. So if you were using something like um, peppermint or eucalyptus or um, um, I don't know, any of the other ones like clove, cinnamon, uh, oh my gosh, there's just so many. Um, the, if you put them directly on the skin, they would burn. Um, oh, hi, hey, Roberta, you're here this morning. Good morning. What we're doing is a carrot onion dish. It's going to be like a cheesy carrot casserole without the dairy and without the, without the dairy, without the cheese. Um, but it's going to taste cheesy. So we're doing that as well as a... Um, uh, buffalo wing potato with, with no, no wings. <laughs> we're not going to use real chicken wings, but we're going to have like a buffalo wing flavor, similar to the uh, buffalo cauliflower. So, um, and then we're talking about essential oils and that you need to have a carrier oil for most essential oils because they are very pure and very strong and should not be used directly on the skin because they will burn you. One of the things that I do uh, that um, I've done often for years, and it works amazing, is you know when you think you're getting a cold and you you know you're taking your vitamin C and your all your stuff and you're you're um, really quite. I'm just cutting the ends off these carrots. Um, you're not quite feeling like you're you know that you're avoiding it, right? You're still feeling like oh no, I hope I'm not sick tomorrow morning. So when you feel like that, what I do is I take a bath and I put um, about five or six drops of essential oil into the bathtub. So now if you want to know how well oils can burn your skin, put a bunch on the bathtub water and then sit in it. <laughs> You'll know then exactly not to put essential oils directly on the skin. And so that will burn. So when I do that in the bathtub, I get into the bathtub first, and then I will usually use some sort of natural, um, either like an Epsom salts or a natural sea salt, or um, I have a couple of um, coconut oil mixes that I put in there. And so, so I'm putting something else on, getting in the tub first, and I'm putting the drops of the eucalyptus oil away from my body, you know, in the middle of the tub so that so that it's not gonna so it has room to disperse on the top of the water before coming into contact with my skin and so um and i and and when you drain the the water from the tub um i have a fiberglass tub some sort of fiberglass i'm not sure what kind uh, but anyways um it's not porcelain and when the when the water drains out of the tub um, there are deep stains, deep stains in the fiberglass of the tub, and they don't come out. They went right through the, um, right through the finish of the bathtub. So that's another reason that you don't want to use essential oils directly on the skin because they do burn and they will go through surfaces, like they will go through fiberglass. So, um, yeah, so personally for myself, I don't, um, I don't ingest any essential oils. I don't put them in water or food or teas or anything like that um, because that's, um, you know, I, I, can, I can clearly see what they do to the skin and what they do to the, uh, to the fiberglass. So for me, I don't ingest essential oils uh, for that reason. So um, anyways, that's just that. So there's lots of fantastic oils. Um, and it, if you're going to put them on the body, like I say, use a carrier oil and, um, which would be like an almond oil, or you can use, you know, pretty much, um, anything, not so much, um, olive oil, but you could use a coconut oil or an almond oil or a uh, grapeseed oil or things like that. So, and you're going to add a few drops of the essential oil into your carrier oil and then put it on the skin. The main 
and best way often for the essential oils to be used is um, for um, get these guys going here um, is to inhale them so your your nose and your olfactory senses are are um, so powerful like way more than you would think and so when you're smelling an oil it just goes directly into all those I don't know you know for sure the the professional terminology but I'm gonna say neurons you know it goes right to the brain um, your your sense of smell stimulates your memory um, stimulates emotions uh, feelings like everything and so the smell is everything so um, so the essential oils like lavender is really known for calming relaxing helping you sleep helping with headaches lots of things like that uh, but there are so many essential oils and then there's so many essential oil blends so um, a lot of people have come up with different essential oil blends there's lots of them out on the market uh, for um, for stress for anxiety for uh... <laughs> I always love it when things jump around under my table um, yeah for for stress and anxiety uh, for um, all kinds of different healing like it can actually be useful for things like asthma it can be obviously useful for, for antiviral um, you can spray essential oils around your room most a lot of people are familiar with thieves oil which is a blend they call it thieves oil because um, oh my gosh it's an old story you know hundreds of years ago if not thousands but um, of the uh, Oh my gosh, I just realized it was kind of like during the plague. <laughs> oh my god, okay, yeah. So anyway, here we are again. And uh, and the thieves oil is what they used to not get sick during the plague. And it has um, it has the uh, the blend of the frankincense and, and myrrh and lavender and cloves. And, you know, I mean, there are very, very many... Um, Variations, that's the word I'm looking for. There are many variations of the thieves oil and uh, and it smells amazing and it really does. They are, it is very antiviral. So um, I have put together a um, uh, antibacterial, anti, no, it's an antiviral spray, an antiviral spray, which is, you know, basically alcohol and the thieves oil blend. And so um, I've been using that and selling quite a bit of it because uh, it smells amazing and it's it's my um my own whatever my own um formula <laughs> words seem to be escaping me today um anyway it's my own formula my own blend blend of how i put the oils together but i've been using that as a antiviral spray and it works really really well what's very interesting is that um I've used that blend for years and years and years to because I used to travel a lot. I used to go all over everywhere and teach um, a lot of the classes and courses and things. And um, and so the um, I would spray the hotel rooms and I would spray, you know, I'd start right at the door, <laughs> the door handle, the outside door handle, inside door handle, the light switches, the this, the that, the phone, the, you know, the remote and everything. And, and uh, you know lift up the sheets and under the under the sheets and I would spray this essential oil blend um, everywhere when I traveled little did I know that I was that I was gonna be like doing that in a way more serious way uh, now but anyway so the essential oils are super powerful for so many different things and um, and so I'm working on a couple blends for uh, anxiety and uh, as it's as a uh, few people have asked for specific formulas um, for certain things, like just um, you know, a couple things, just whatever those whatever those issues and anxieties are, and specific health problems that are causing a lot of anxiety. And so, so a lot of the blends do have specific health um, things that they help, specific health issues that they that they are specific for. And, um, yeah, so I put together blends like that. But I encourage you to look into that. Uh, you know, the health food store has uh, quite a few different blends, essential oil blends. 
and power three has blends um a lot of the different places do um okay so thieves oil yeah no the thieves oil um you can use it in a couple different ways you can inhale it and it works really well as an antiviral um, or depending on the blend that you have put um get one of those little you know those little tiny spray bottles that you can stick in your purse and uh, or your pocket or whatever and put like 10 drops of that essential uh or the the thieves oil blend um typically i used to put it in water because i was you know going to hotel rooms and stuff and i wasn't using it as a hand sanitizer but if you're using it now you need over 90 percent alcohol so stick your your 10 i don't know depending on the bottle you might even want to go 15 drops or so because uh, it's quite concentrated or at least the one i don't know which one you have but generally they're pretty concentrated and they should be concentrated but anyway you want to smell you know strong uh, you don't want to just smell the alcohol you want to smell the thieves oil let's put it that way so uh, put it in there and then just spray it around spray it on your door handles um, I spray it as soon as I get back into the car, over the steering wheel, over everything I touch. I spray it over my everywhere. Um, and so it's, it's super, um, Marcel's, I don't know. I'm not familiar with that brand or how concentrated it is. But what, uh, what I can suggest is, you know, put 10 drops in a little bottle of over 90% alcohol and spray it. And if, if you can really smell the thieves oil, then that's awesome. If it smells more like alcohol, then you probably haven't used enough, or it's not strong enough. I'm not really sure. So, um, but yeah, super, super important and vital to uh, to use these oils because they have so many uses for all kinds of things. I mean, you know, they're helpful for things like asthma, allergies. Um, you know, certain ones can be helpful for arthritis, uh, like it just digestion, all kinds of things. So. Uh, yeah, so check that out. That's one of the um, one of the herbal tips for today, and then we're going to move on to la 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 la. We're gonna let that cook a bit. It's starting to make noise. <laughs> starting to make noise, so um, I don't want it to scorch. Just trying to get those carrots cooked. And so we, I did pre-cook these potatoes. Um, so that you guys didn't have to sit here and watch me boil water with potatoes in it. So I did the potatoes. So I do have still a little bit of water in there and I don't want the water in there. Let's see. I do have a bowl here. Um, so we'll just try and drain this. And so, yeah, so these are, are already cooked uh, to, you know, I mean, as close as you can get to tender firm, <laughs> tender firm. And, um, so just the, they're the fresh new, these are the fresh new little potatoes at, uh, that I got at, at Naysgaard's Farm Market. And they're really, really nice. So I'm just going to dump those guys in there. Grab a clean, um, a clean utensil. There we go. Okay. So this is like way too easy, you guys. Seriously, it's like yeah super easy things today because i did go gleaning this morning and so i was up in the uh, plum tree with the group and yeah it's just such an awesome year for fruit i just can't even um i can't even express um it's, it's so exciting there are just so many plums and so many varieties oh my gosh everything from little tiny grape plums to yellow orange purple oh my god so many so anyways, um, what I'm using here is the, um, this, this is the Hellman's Vegan A's or Vegan. Um, I'm not as crazy about it uh, as I am the Vegan A's um, because I don't really like mayonnaise. Like I just don't like the flavor, never have. Um, I mean, if you can hide it in a, in a sandwich or something, then it's awesome, but it's not it's just, I don't know. Um, but this, if you do like mayonnaise or Miracle Whip or any of those, this tastes just like it. So it's very good. Um, it's just, I like the veganase because the veganase has more of a lighter taste to me. It has a, um, almost, it's just, uh, more neutral. It's kind of, kind of like a sour cream 
ish sort of flavor, you know, not quite as strong tasting as this tastes quite as, as mayonnaise. -y. <laughs> That's just me, you know, I, most people like mayonnaise. And so this is a very good product. If you like mayonnaise, there you go. That's, that's what, uh, that's what I'm going to stick with. Okay. Getting in the clean spoon here. So I'm just going to, um, grab some of this and, oh, there's quite a few potatoes. I'm going to say three, go like this, my intuitive cooking, three overly heaping, I think that's pretty good, three overly heaping tablespoons of your whatever you want to use that would be like a mayonnaise, and, um, and then we're going to use some of Frank's hot sauce, super easy recipe, and this is going to be the tricky part because how many times did I shake that? I'm going to guess that's two tablespoons, maybe. Um, and this is going to be the tricky part because I'm going to try and taste this and not poison myself so that I can't keep talking to you guys. Oh, <laughs> we just love throwing things around here. We always do that. I get a little bit overexcited in my, in my carrying on and sharing. So we're going to blend this up. This stuff does blend really well. It probably blends better than the veganese. So that's one um, thing. It just, it's very, very smooth as you can see. Okay. So I'm used to it looking more orange because I like things pretty spicy. Um, but I should try it just in case. So I'm going to give it a little I mean, my face isn't burning off yet, so I think we need more. Okay, because I do like things spicy. So, so the, the what we're trying to do is make this taste like um, chicken wings, hot chicken wings. Okay, so that's like two heaping tablespoons, I think. I don't think that was three. I think maybe I didn't have two at the beginning. Um, and so this is going to be a. Uh... Huh? Thank you, thank you, Roberta. Um, this is going to be like instead of a hot wings and we've done this before with cauliflower. It's amazing. You, you put this all over cauliflower and then just um, bake it in the oven and it's just really super, super awesome. So new spoon. We're going to go with, have a look here. Oh, it doesn't matter what size the spoon. I'm just going to take a little bit. It's funny, you know, I think maybe because, um, because the mayonnaise has that, you know, when you, when you have something too hot, they say to drink milk and, um, I just flew out, out of my head why that works. One of you guys might know that's the beauty of, um, so I'm going to say like three tablespoons. I'm going to, I'm going to go for a little more, um, three tablespoons, um, yeah, so that's a nice thing about doing this Facebook Live is that we share information and it's so interactive and everyone comments. And so if there's something that I don't know, then you guys might know and you can share it for everybody who's joining us and or looking in or lurking in. We welcome you all. Um, I just do... I'm a certified herbalist and I do uh, natural health consulting and I just do fast, easy 15 minute recipes that are healthy uh, for the most part. And, um, and then we just do this Facebook live where we hang out together and we share recipes. I'm not a professional cook and so I'm learning as well as you are when we do these, which is super awesome. And I have about 150 recipes or more, I don't know how many on my Facebook page or on my um, YouTube and uh, so I encourage you to check that out we're, we're down to testing with the forks now we're running out of clean silverware okay I don't 
know, maybe maybe this is mild. It's the original. All right, we're so we're gonna be up to uh, four tablespoons. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's a good thing you don't mind hanging out. Okay, so here's the thing. I'll entertain you while I'm trying to get this right. Is cayenne is so healing and so um so cayenne is a circulatory herb helps with circulation it moves things around it gets things going to where they need to go in the body it opens up the blood vessels opens up the capillaries it helps with cold hands and feet uh, lack of circulation it helps with headaches helps with migraines and if you are and i've done this before if i'm traveling like I said, I was I have traveled a lot for um, teaching everywhere and being, you know, hotel rooms and, and restaurants and stuff like that previous, of course. Um, and so if you felt like you had a cold, or I if I felt like I had a cold, and um, actually, I have to say, I, I would have probably figured this out on my own, but sometimes I don't figure things out on my own. And sometimes I'm just not that smart sometimes. But I was traveling with Stephen Hoare, who's a friend of mine that uh, he uh, has been the past president of the American Herbalist Guild for years and years and years. Stephen Horn is absolutely like the uh, amazing herbalist um, written. I, don't, I can't even tell you how many books and, and how many um, everything. Like he's, he's uh, well known. Anyways. Uh, when we were traveling and we went to eat at the, like the group thing for the breakfast, he was putting this in his tea, the Frank's hot sauce. I looked at him and I said, oh, you know, that's unusual. You're trying to increase your circulation or all the things that I know about cayenne, right? And he said he had a sore throat and there was nothing else available. So if there's nothing else available, the cayenne, the cayenne absolutely will help with sore throat. It's kind of like gargling with salt, but it will, um, it will open up and heal. And of course, open sinuses. If you think you're getting a cold, of course, it's going to open up sinuses. But anyways, um, yeah. So, and I, I don't think that he would mind me sharing that little story, but, um, but, uh, yeah. So if you are somewhere and you, and you're feeling like you've got a cold coming on, uh, or you need your sinuses opened up, the hot sauce will also facilitate opening up and clearing your sinuses, helping your sore throat. So cayenne is just the most amazing thing on the planet. And, um, oh good, okay, somebody's measuring, yay Jane. Okay, so it looks like two tablespoons of the Frank's hot sauce. Let's give it another try. Yeah, see it's looking much oranger now. It's got a nice, a nice, um, you know, I can taste it now. It's got a little bit of a bite, but I'm going to add one more tablespoon. <laughs> okay, you guys are going to watch me do this all day long until I get it right. It's almost right. I should only add half because I am making this for, um, I'm going to be sharing it with a friend of mine. And so um, on, when I'll be bringing it over to them, and so I don't want to, burn their face off so I'll just add a little bit more I just because I like it super hot and I can add more to mine after too but I do want it to taste a little bit like hot wings so I'm going to trust intuitively that's just right because it was almost just right with that last taste and so this is going to be absolutely just right and then if I want to uh, if I want it super hot for our own selves I will add more to my portion of this Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Thank you, Jane. Somebody has to be writing down my, I need a person who wants to write down my recipes and um, keep track of measurements for me because I'm just so not good at that. Okay, so we're just going to put that in there. And, um, you know, pretty much that's it. You can add... Um, you know, salt and pepper and, and different things to it. Um, pepper is probably a good idea. Just, you know, in my mind, the pepper is a good idea because it, um, 
as the little specks for, you know, for, for color and for um, visual appeal. Is that a word? Visual appeal? Oh, I'm being sloppy. Okay. So that's it. So you can serve this um, warm. Oh, God, I made a mess. Okay. It's not going to be pretty right now, but I'll put it in a different dish. I just wanted to make sure I get it really um, mixed. And also, um, you know, I just can't see with glasses or without. And, I, and in order for me to see that, I this is blurry. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, and that's the truth. Okay. So, we are going to add some pepper to it. And it will, it will look pretty when I put it in the other dish. Okay, so there we go. Okay. And don't try and sprinkle pepper while you're inhaling and talking. Okay, so that's that. We'll move this over here. We don't need that anymore. We can move this here, um, which reminds me uh, we're going to, um, we're going to do recipe tomorrow, um, maybe, uh, with this here is, um, I'll tell you what that is tomorrow, but it's super cool, super easy, and it actually ends up tasting like pistachios. So, yes, so that is the thing. Let me make sure this doesn't fall down. All right, so our carrots are like seriously done, and what we're doing here is we're going to, um, I, I, we're still making sure the carrots are done well enough for the people that can't chew, and I'm um, telling you, it's, it's, uh, it's a challenge getting old. <laughs> oh my god, I'm talking about not chewing. I chipped another tooth. So anyways, um, yeah, so that's why my carrots have to be soft this week. Okay, so the carrots, this is just onions and carrots, and um, we're going to add, uh, kind of like make a little bit of a cheesy sauce. So what we're doing, we have a little bit of, um, we're going to add some almond, I've got almond and coconut milk, but this is just a little bit of tapioca starch. I prefer the tapioca starch because, because um, I think that we get way too much corn and so I'm not really a fan of the cornstarch and I would so I prefer to use the tapioca um, I think what I'm gonna do I need to make sure I have lots of silverware here so you're just gonna add a little bit of water with your tapioca same as you would flour or cornstarch you're gonna add it to cold water and then that's just going to thicken um, to give it a little bit of a glaze so I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute and add some of the um, almond coconut milk. And Silk has changed their label in case you guys didn't notice. I didn't even recognize it in the store. It used to be blue and white and now it's purple and white. And I, I, I don't know, I think there are other colors too, depending on the flavors. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of the um, milk here and you can add whatever you want. If you want it to be very rich, you could add a, um, like an actual coconut milk, a canned coconut milk, and that would make it really uh, quite Thai or um, Indian tasting, you know, it would just have that coconut flavor, which is super awesome. So we could do that too. I'm not going to do that with this one, but if you wanted to um, make it a little bit more of that, you know, that Thai or Indian, uh, the coconut milk in the can is sweeter. So it, it brings out, you know, just a, a richness. But if you didn't have a can of coconut milk, you could use this and a little bit of maple syrup. Just to sweeten the milk, just a tiny bit. Not much, but just a tiny bit. And so, um, so you could do that if you didn't have canned coconut milk. It doesn't have the same consistency because this is quite thin, but uh, it would be close. So I'm adding the um, nutritional yeast to it. So that's going to give the cheesy flavor. Nutritional yeast has your B vitamins. It's um, specifically got like calcium and vitamin B3 and, and everything. And um, a lot of people, <clears throat> a lot of people that eat plant-based think that the vitamin or the um, nutritional yeast has B12. 
and it actually doesn't um, unless it's been fortified but because so many vegans use it for b12 uh, most of the time it is fortified so you can see this is bringing it um, with the b12 fortified with the b12 so you can see it's thickening already just because of the nutritional yeast it's just such a fantastic thing to use um, bringing in such a beautiful cheesy flavor and um, I'm gonna add more <laughs> intuitively I want it cheesy so um, yeah so that's why I'm putting this in first before I add the um, tapioca starch you know just to see how thick this makes it because this makes it a nice thickness too so I probably won't need all of that I'll probably use it for something else the other thing, um, oh, of course, I'm going to use a, um, a Celtic sea salt, a little bit of sea salt in there. I did not use any of the Celtic sea salt in the buffalo potatoes because that um, the uh, vegan veganese is already has, you know, I'm sure, um, I don't know how much sodium is in it, but I'm sure it's got more than what I normally use. Anyway, it doesn't need any salt. When I tasted it, it does not need salt. It, it is the perfect um, flavor. <laughs> Just the way it is. Okay, pepper too. Yes, for sure. And the other thing, you know, when you're adding the black pepper, always makes me think of turmeric. And since we are working with an orange dish, uh, the turmeric is going to... Um, it's going to blend right in not that I would care if it if it turned everything orange but it will turn everything orange if you're using it in a different recipe <laughs> I'm running out of utensils so we're using this and that would be like oh gosh get it on there okay like a quarter of a teaspoon I don't want to add too much to this because uh, the turmeric has you know just a little bit of a bitter flavor and um, Normally, typically, I wouldn't care, but again, this dish, I'm going to be sharing it with somebody else, so I don't want to scare them off by cooking. <laughs> uh, sometimes it tastes just a little too um, healthy, <laughs> so I've been told. Okay, so this is the Earth Island Parmesan. I love this stuff. Love it, love it, love it. It is so amazing. It sprinkles on just like a Parmesan, and... Um, it's just like totally awesome. I buy these in the twos and threes because I love it so much. And then this is the Daya. Uh, this particular one's pep pepper jack flavor. And it's pretty, it's really good. I, I'm not a huge fan of Daya because I don't know. I heard something about some sort of political something or other. But, you know, it's it's been a really good product for, for um melting really well and I don't use it often or a lot so uh, so I'm okay with it okay so you can see that looks very cheesy and you know what I almost don't even need that tapioca do I I'm just gonna add the tiniest bit um, and then I'll put it back on here because when you're adding and you guys know all this I know you know this way way more than I do um, that when you're adding the tapioca or the cornstarch or the flour with the with the water um, once it hits the heat is when it starts to get thick right so you want to get the heat on so that you can see how thick it's going to get otherwise it can get like kind of gooey so i'm just going to put just a little bit on to add like a glaze and that wasn't even quarter of a cup and then you put it over the heat and then it starts to thicken and then you'll see what you've got. So I think that's about it, really. You know, it turned out beautiful with just the, um, almost without any tapioca. So there you go. Didn't really even need it. And we love doing things like that, that we don't really, uh, we, we often change the plan halfway through. And um, yeah, wow, did I ever dirty up silverware here? Okay, that's awesome. I'm just waiting for this. And so, yes, we are, um, what did we talk about? Essential oils, right? Essential oils. So definitely check that out. Um, 
I'm going to be putting together some blends, but also for, for anxiety because I've been asked to do that, but also um, check it out for different things. Um, the health food store has different blends and different companies have different blends. And um, it's a great thing. Lavender oil specifically is a great thing to keep in your purse for bug bites. Um, you know, I know that I had spoken about that early on, you know, before the summer started for all the, uh, mosquito bites and stuff like that, but we still have, um, we still have several weeks left of summer to get bit. And so, uh, get a bottle, a little bottle of lavender oil, stick it in your pocket. It's super, super handy. And like I say, it's very calming, soothing and, and good for headaches and stuff. So yeah, so I'm just going to let that thicken up and that's it. So I, um, yeah, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. We're going to do something different tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed sharing this morning with you and all the different hints. And so please do make comments and ask questions and uh, feel free to put in your requests for things that you want me to try. And we will go ahead and do that. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Have a good day.